Hey y'all, hi. Here's the thing. Sometimes I just get tired of the sound of my own voice. I mean, obviously I'm hearing my own voice now, like it's in the nature of filming, but I think I get tired of like the register of my voice that is like telling people how it is. Obviously I love reviewing things and I love making those kind of short video essays that are conceptual. I love my work and it's all fine. Everything's fine. It's just today I'm having one of those days where I'm like, I cannot be the authority on anything. And I have a couple of videos planned that I'm really excited to film that have a little bit of that register or are more classic beauty content. And I just cannot do it. I'm in that mode where it's like the longer I live, the less I feel like I know and the less I can stomach the veneer of authority. That is sometimes what is required and which bears fruit and which I'm, again, not criticizing. It's just not today. Not today, Satan. So I'm going to make some boring content, which is just going to be me putting on makeup and that'll be good. I could not even make a plan that was like a look for summer, like a good, like glowy skin. Like I couldn't even make a beauty plan. I have brought a random assortment of things that I just threw into this caddy. I have one piece of random PR that I will try to use, but it's for brows and brows are the only thing I already have on. So go figure. And maybe at the end, after I do my makeup, I'll put my hair into that crown of braids that I had on for a couple of videos last week week and that so many people were enjoying and asking about. That'll make the video beefy. That'll give you something to watch for. Other than that, I just don't know what to tell you. I don't know what it's going to be like. I will probably look better at the end. And that is all that I can promise. And now let's go ahead and get into the meat of the video. Maybe I'll zoom you in a little bit. I might regret it if I do. Maybe I'll zoom you in a little bit for this part and so you can see the makeup better. Because you know, it's all that I've got to give today. The actual makeup is all that I've got to give. Let's look at this stuff. So this brand is called Kimiko, the Japanese brow experts. I already have my usual, the Benefit brow wax in my eyebrows and then some of the Gen Z arch support. So this isn't gonna be a good review. This, it's nothing. This video is nothing. I'm giving you, I'm planning to serve you nothing from the outset, but at least we can open it together. It just came in the mail. So this I think is the, ooh, yeah, it's like a clear gel. And then this is the pencil, which I don't know. I can use the gel on top of what's already there and it won't tell us much about what it does because it'll just be mixing with the other product. I don't know if there'll be room for the pencil, but it's very pretty, very classy. It's a really hard, hard pencil. So I'm getting those really fine hair-like strokes, which I know is what some people want and kind of what I want actually from a brow pencil. But again, I don't know if that's the vibe today. Let's see what this does. Do I even have a mirror? Yes, I do. Well, it is effectively allowing me to reshape my misshapen brows. I had put on these other brow products this morning because I had a doctor's appointment. There actually is a little bit of makeup on my face or there was, but it kind of got worn off. I was wearing a mask. I've been like, editing all day, touching my face, not paying attention. So for all intents and purposes, there isn't really makeup on my face anymore, but my brows, of course, have retained what was in them. They've just gotten pushed out of shape. So this little thing is, you know, it's helping as well as any spoolie would. And then the gel is definitely adding a little bit of liquid to the hairs, which is mixing with the product that's there and then resetting, which is what I would expect any brow gel or pomade worth its salt to be doing in this situation. But it doesn't really tell me anything distinct about this product. Okay, they're looking more respectable. You know, all I can say at this point is looks nice so far. The testing has begun. We'll report back. And thanks Kimiko for sending those products. I'm looking forward to getting to know them better. Here's what I feel like doing. I feel like having glowy skin and a juicy, ruddy lip and maybe no eye makeup at all. Maybe that with the braids is going to get me where I need to go today. Let's start with the glowy skin. Did I bring, well, the only glowy skin product I brought was this can make cream highlight, but it'll do. I'll just have to use a lot of it. I was hoping I had like an under layer of glow, like Auric Glow Last or Lisa Eldridge Seamless Skin, but I didn't put either of them into the caddy. It's fine. I'm going to put on, I had some of this on earlier this morning, but I haven't applied it on camera yet. So I'm just going to show you. It's the Givenchy color corrector. I showed you that I had it in the NARS video and then I didn't apply it. Although I pinned a comment about it because I've been using it since then. It does color correct, but it's pretty sheer. I think that actually tells the tale. It really, it doesn't do it a super intense redness cancellation. It just ever so slightly neutralizes, which is really nice. It's a nice thing to have. But in keeping with the theme of this video, that's kind of all that I can say so far. I've only been using this for a little while, so the jury is still out on it. 
The one thing that I can say is that I love the finish. It definitely earns its name skin caring. I feel like I've put on a serum after I put it on and that makes me want to keep using it every single day, which is what I've done since I got it. But I could see a future in which, and I haven't been putting myself together a lot every single day. So I've been using this on a lot of days where I'm not gonna be filming and I'm not doing the most. And I've just been doing this, like putting it all over kind of as like a color correcting skincare. I could see a future in which I keep using this kind of as a last layer of my skin care and then I use a greener green color corrector on top, especially on spots. I have all these healing spots. They're kind of like on their last day of being a bit scabby. I feel like tonight is going to be one of those nights where maybe I mask, do a little bit of physical exfoliation. Actually, I'll probably do a physical exfoliation, then maybe a sheet mask, then pack on even more intensely hydrating stuff and wake up tomorrow with like a fresh new face. But for now, <laughs> this is just all clinging on for one last day of texture. Yet another reason why I was like, ugh, I can't do my job as a beauty <laughs> as a beauty guru today. Wow, the brow gel appears to be really holding, like really holding its shape. Ooh, I mean, I'm trying to break up a little part that got too stuck together for my liking there and it's like not letting me break it up, but that's good. That's, it's good that it has that hold for me. Ooh, promising. Okay, skin's already looking a bit better. What do I want to do? I brought a sponge. I'm so into sponges lately. This is the Refer sponge. It's nice. It's very soft. I haven't used it yet, but I did wet it. I at least wetted my sponge. Hashtag prepared. I think I'm going to use a tiny bit of this NARS foundation just to get like, like a panel of coverage on the sides of my face. I just did like a thorough first impressions of a bunch of NARS products. I'll link it. And I have continued to just play with this a little bit in this very manner. Just being like, hmm, what does it do that I want? This is one of the things it does that I want. It like puts a thin layer over a large surface area without looking like makeup. The sponge is great. I like this better than the ColourPop sponge I've been using. And I particularly like this foundation on the forehead. I feel like foreheads in general, maybe it's just my forehead, but my forehead in general looks better without makeup. <laughs> like it just doesn't take makeup super well. It tends to be a little dry, a little wrinkly. I will often color correct it and it often doesn't need as much makeup. You know what I mean? There's other parts of my face. It's not where I'm getting breakouts and stuff. But this NARS stuff, I like my forehead better with it than without it, which is actually kind of a big thing. I sort of started to suspect that in the video, the NARS video, and it's continued to be true as I've tested it. Mm. Just looks great. Okay, so I put it on the perimeter of my face. I'm still very sensitive to the fact that this oxidizes to be kind of on the yellow side, especially in natural light. I only put on a really thin layer, but I just don't want to be going around the rest of the day with that slightly dark yellow tint to the face. So I kept it on the perimeter. I kept it thin. And now I'm going to go in with the rose ink concealer, which is a much better match for me. I'm going to do like the center, the center of the face, which will really affect the effect it will really affect with an A, the effect of the makeup on my face, the effect with an E the most. All right, feeling like myself. I like the way that it has come out with those two products. And now I'm just gonna spot conceal a little bit with the NARS Soft Matte Complete Concealer in Chantilly. I'm so boring using the same products all the time. How can you stand me? But wow, with the base that I had laid down, a little bit of this is going such a long way. Like it's just taking a touch on the blemish and then a little bit of buffing around the edges of it to make it disappear. Maybe partly because it's NARS on NARS, you know, like these are the parts of my face where I put the NARS foundation. It's obviously really playing well with the concealer. You know, sometimes when you feel like you just can't stand yourself, a little bit of makeup goes a long way. I woke up this morning like Allen Ginsberg. I can't stand my own mind. And then I was like, and that means I can't film. And then I was like, but I have to. Wow. Ooh, I'm so ready to do the glowy skin and the lip. What should we do first? Let's do the lip first because I don't want to get carried away with blush. I'm going to put on a little bit of lip liner. It's this Eason one, but it doesn't matter. It's like red lip liner. Uh, I wish I had a brown. Ooh. I do have a brown. Okay, I changed my mind. I'm gonna use Merit Tiger, but I'm gonna use more like a light brown liner and kind of mix them together because Tiger's like a brown brick red. It looks really red on me, but I feel like using this lip liner is gonna key hit more brown instead of red, which is kind of what I want. It'll still be red. It's just the other lip, lip liner was gonna push it really red and I want it to stay rusty and intriguing. I love to take a little lip brush and buff the edges of a lip liner. All right, here we go.
What a great color. Color fixes everything. Oh, it's just such a great color. This is what I like to do. Put lipstick on top of dry lips. Like I, they were dry, they were feeling dry. Rub it in a lot so that it moisturizes them and also takes the color with it like into them. And then use the same lip brush to blend the, the lipstick around the edges in the same way that I just did the lip liner. Mm, I should have blotted first. Blot and then the blending thing. Otherwise it gets quite messy. Okay. And see how it makes the lack of eye makeup look, to me, it makes it look so intentional. Like that to me makes my naked eyes just look cute. Whereas before they were looking quite unmade up. I'm really getting into it. Okay, let us, you know what I brought down? This Westman Atelier blush. I just haven't used it in a really long time. Mm, I mean, I'm gonna try to get that blended away using the highlight. It's still, it's just pinkier than I wanted given the shade of the lips. Mm, my cheeks have really retained that pinky color. You know what I need? This, this is Merit Fox. It's kind of like the cheek version of the lip. I'm so glad I did the lip first because I think if I was at this point just with the cheeks and the bare eyes and I didn't have the lip on, I would be tempted to put some of this blush on my lids to kind of tie it in. But that would be a really different thing. Also sort of pale, editorial, wa washed out eyes, but it would just be different. And I really want to leave them totally blank. Maybe a little bit of the cream highlight actually, just under the brow bone, but no color. Yeah, that that's helping to tie the cheeks and the eyes together, but without taking away. Ooh, this is exactly what I wanted, my vision. Okay, I've got to re-spot conceal a little bit because my enthusiasm about the blush took away. And um, I think I want to use a tiny bit of um, powder just on that spot conceal, but I don't want to get carried away on powder all over, which is what I've been doing lately. I've been getting carried away and powdering all over because I'm so into this NARS powder. Can't stop, won't stop. But today, just trying to reinforce the places on the sides of my face where I've had to conceal a lot. And then without anything fresh on the brush, I'm gonna do the T-zone, but I don't really want to mattify it. Maybe just blur a little bit. Mm. Dream look for a day, a desultory day. That's how I feel. Cause it's like, I care, but I don't care. And it's like, this is how I look with makeup on, but this is also how I look without makeup on all over my face all the time. I'm even kind of liking it with the hair, but I'm gonna do the thing. The other thing I said that I would do. I zoom back out. Uh, maybe not. You can probably see better from here. If it starts to become a problem how zoomed in we are, I'll zoom back out. I have a feeling I'm gonna be washing my hair tomorrow, this week, so I'm just gonna show you how I did it, and it might not, I might not be as careful as I was the other day, but you'll at least see how I did it. I've made a part, but it's not super clean, and what I'm gonna do is just make a regular braid with the front part first, just so it gets nice and tucked in, but I'm doing it kind of high, Right, I'm starting the braid like up here. So it's an awkward height for a braid if I wanted it to lie flat. I basically, it's that like Pippi Longstocking height, like a braid that sticks straight out. Also messy, but that's not because I'm being desultory today. That's how I did it the other day too. And I'm temporarily putting a hairband in. Same thing on the other side. Another temporary hairband. This is the only other one I have down here. <laughs> it doesn't even match the first one because I'm a hair influencer. Okay, so now I'm just gonna try to figure out which way is the best way. Oh yeah, we're, it's out, you can't see from here. One's gonna go underneath and one's gonna go on top. Also, they're tighter, even though I was sort of messy about it, they're tighter than they were when I filmed those videos because I had had that crown of braids in for like four days at that point. So they they start out tighter. Okay, I think I want this one first. So I've pulled it across and I kind of tucked the front hair underneath it. So the front hair is like back here now. And now I'm just gonna use a bunch of bobby pins to hold it in place. I love these huge bobby pins. They are sold as roller pins pins, so like pins to hold your rollers in place. They're also amazing for holding thick hair in place. Like I only needed a couple of them just to get it in place to begin with. And I'm leaving the little hairband in there. I'll, I'll pull it out in a second. So again, tucking the front hair, what I'm talking about is this stuff, pulling it back and letting the braid be like a headband that pulls it back. I think I'm gonna go ahead and pull this head, this hairband out now. Those ends of hair are getting tucked underneath this other braid and it might be hard to get it out later. Getting this one in place. <laughs> 
there. And that's how you do your hair. I'm gonna go, go ahead and take this hairband out. And now I'm gonna use the bobby pins to get that little shaggy end in somewhere. Just like tucking it in. This one is still flopping around on the other side. I'm gonna get it tucked in too. Now the braids are in place and now it's just like messing with it. So for me, that's like getting like this little piece that was short pinned in. I'm using a smaller pin for that, a smaller bobby pin. There's this little piece sticking out over here too. I'm gonna pin that in. It's like, again, a regular size bobby pin. Gotta make a choice about like this stuff. Do I want it sort of loose, sort of falling out a little bit more drapey romantic or do I want it all like tight to my head? I think part of what made the crown look nice in those videos was that all of that kind of was loose and it was all starting to come a little bit unraveled. And the braids were getting really big and soft and fluffy because they were starting to come unraveled. But this is how it started. This is how that hairdo started four days before. Maybe a little bit looser. Maybe that other one was a little bit looser to begin with. I might have kind of gotten carried away or I wasn't focusing on keeping it loose because I was focusing on narrating my actions. But that's the general idea. There isn't like one way to do these things, you know? Just like make it up. Make it up over here. Also, I'll tell you that as I was sleeping on it, exercising in it and like doing all the stuff in it, this hairdo last week, it was starting to come undone and I was constantly putting more pins in to make sure that it didn't fall apart completely. And then sometimes at night I would get annoyed by some of the pins and I would take some of them out and leave them at my bedside table. And when I woke up the next morning, I would reassemble it a little bit, but then it would just be a bit messier that day because I would have mussed it up while I was sleeping. And it just evolved organically over the course of the week until the day that you all saw it. And I think it, that the next day after that was the day I took it out and washed it. To me, it doesn't look that great from the back. Let's see. Yeah, the back of my head's kind of flat. I think some people, it looks beautiful from the side, this type of thing. On me, I feel like it's not my absolute best look, but it looks, I think, good from the back and from the front, so I'm willing to put up with it. There's a lot to be said for it and some to be said against it. I also will usually take a small mirror and check the back as I just did to make sure there aren't bobby pins in awkward places that you can not see from the front, but that you can see from the back. And I didn't do that just now, but I'll do it later if I decide to leave it. I did it. I filmed a video. I put on makeup. I'm a hair influencer. I am a responsible worker. I scoot up a little now that that bun's gone. I'm shiny. Literally no one can complain. And so I'm gonna go. Thank you for being here, especially if you stuck it out until the end. I hope that this was not too disappointing of a departure from our regularly scheduled programming. And let me tell you, I got some good ones coming up, okay? I have some good videos planned. I just couldn't bring myself to film any of them today, but I'll film them soon. I appreciate you so much for being subscribed and for commenting and liking the videos and all of that. And whatever else you do today, don't forget to take extra good care of yourself so that you can be the most effective version of yourself as you do your work in the world.